Welcome back. In this section, we are going to implement user registration feature and we are going to use Spring Data JPA to interact with the database. And then we are going to rewrite user repository using JDBC client instead of Spring Data JPA. And this is mainly for uh, teaching you how to use JDBC client instead of Spring Data JPA so that you will be familiar with uh, how to use JDBC client to interact with the database in case if you are not using Spring Data JPA in your application and if you prefer to use JDBC client. So let's get started. Implementing user registration is again straightforward based on what we have already seen. So I'm going to quickly walk you through it uh, because it is uh, already we have done something similar already. So here in our layout.html file, we already have a uh, link to register. So when we click on the register link, it is going to access this uh, slash register uh, using a get request. Then I have created a new controller called user controller. And here I have a get mapping uh, request handler to show register form. So here I have created a new registration uh, register user request a record with the form fields that I am going to use in my user registration uh, page. So here we have email, password and name and I have used Jakarta validation annotations not blank email for email uh, validation and also for password and all of them are mandatory and email should be a valid email address. So I have this one and when uh, when the request come to a uh, register page, we are going to put this as a model attribute uh, under the name user and render the register uh, HTML template. So in our templates directory, I have created a new register.html file. So here again, this is a, a very similar timely form where we have the action submitted to slash register uh, with method post. And we have bind this user object here and we have three fields, email, password and name. And we have used th colon field and then we are displaying if there are any uh, errors related to email field. Similar to that, we have password and then name. Okay, so nothing new and simply we have a link if you already have an account you can go to login so uh, nothing new once we click on a register again we are going to handle that here using post mapping slash register and we have used this model attribute so that all the data that is submitted is going to populate into this object and also we have this at valid to validate the input data and again, we have binding results so that we can check if there are any form validation errors. If so, we are going to redisplay the registration form with, with errors. Otherwise, we are creating a uh, create user command similar to how we have created a create short URL command object. Similar to that, I have created uh, email, password, name and role. And then I have populated that command object with the request parameters that is coming through register uh, user request. So email, password and name. And here by default the newly registered user role would be user. So I have created this command object and then I called user service. I have created a new service. Okay, so here I have created a new service called user service and then I have injected user repository and password encoder. If you remember, we have registered a bin of password encoder in our configuration, web security configuration. So here we have registered this bin. So it is going to be injected into this user service. Okay, so now what we are doing in create user, uh, we have taken the command object. First, we are checking whether there is any user already exist with uh, the given email ID. If so, we are throwing the exception email already exist. Otherwise, we are creating a new user entity and then we are populating email. And here we received a password value as a plain text. And then we are using password encoder dot encode to encode this and then set the name role here. Uh, I think we should use our role. Okay and created at the current time and save. So 
again our user repository is extending from jpa repository so all the uh, features like find by mail uh, we have already talked about this exist by email so it is automatically handled by uh, spring data jpa using deroid query uh, mechanism so find by is going to be removed and where uh, where class is going to be prepared by where email equals to whatever the value it is given similarly here it is going to check if there is any record with the given email if so it is going to return true otherwise false okay so this is all the functionality and uh, let us start our application so i'm going to register as a new user first i am not going to enter anything and then click on register and it will redisplay uh, with the uh, errors here and then i am going to okay i am going to register a new user called ramu uh, ramu at gmail.com password is also ramu okay so i am clicking register registration is successful now i should be able to register uh, login with the newly created user okay i am able to log in and uh, i don't have any urls yet let me create a spring.io uh, two days okay i have created one now if i go to here i can see this so i'm able to successfully register and i'm able to create my own urls as well so user registration is working fine now let us focus on if we go back to our code we have this user repository what we are going to do because we have extended from jpa repository some of the methods are inherited from it and we are able to use it if we remove this and how we are going to use jdbc client and implement all the required operations we are going to see next so in order to remove this uh, spring data jpa from user repository only but not from short url i'm going to continue with that but here i would like to just demonstrate how we can use jdbc client uh, for user related operations only so what i'm going to do i'm going to comment out this part and right now let me stop this and if i try to build it it is going to show errors uh, here it is saying user repository dot save method is not there earlier it was there because we are extending from jpa repository which has save method so now i'm going to create a new method okay so what else uh, are there any other methods we are using that are inherited from so we are using find by id so again create a method uh, that is id and it is going to return optional of uh, user type okay any other things no so now we are going to implement instead of making it as a uh, interface i'm going to make it as a class and add this repository annotation and here i'm going to return empty for now return false okay okay so i have just added this dummy implementation so here what this is complaining about optional of user okay these are not public earlier it was uh, interface method so they are all public by default so here let me make them public now everything is all right now i need to figure out how i can use jdbc client and implement all these operations so let's do that so first let us talk about what is jdbc client so in java we have jdbc api to talk to the database but it is very low level and usually you need to write a lot of boilerplate code for interacting with the database so spring provides earlier uh, a higher level abstraction called jdbc template so uh, that takes care of all low level activities of acquiring the connection and then performing the database uh, operations like running some query and then uh, if everything fine committing the transaction so all these low level uh, creating connections really releasing connections and everything is done uh, behind the scenes and providing a simpler API. 
but still jdbc template is kind of a, a not that uh, modern style it is a little bit of older uh, style so recently in spring framework 6.1 they have introduced a new uh, api called jdbc client uh, which is more modern style and also provides a fluent api which is very uh, developer friendly to use so we are going to use that and implement all these database operations and one cool thing is you don't need to add any additional api when you add a spring data jpa in addition to a spring data jpa dependencies and auto configuration and everything it already registered JDBC client, uh, which you can inject into our user repository and then start using it. So if uh, you are creating a new project and if you are not using Spring Data JPA, what you can do, you can go and uh, you can select JDBC. So if you add this one, it will automatically uh, auto configure a JDBC client but uh, we have already added this uh, data jpa means it already uh, configured that for us and we can inject private final jdbc client okay so we don't need to do anything else but if you are creating a brand new project and you don't want to use spring data jpa you want to use jdbc client you can select that uh, JDBC API dependency instead of or data JPA. Okay, so now that we have JDBC client in place, I'm going to quickly implement all these operations and then walk you through it. So I have implemented all these operations using, using JDBC client here. So first we have written what is the SQL that we would like to run. So in our case, we want to find a user for the given email. So we have selected all the columns and from user where email equals to, uh, we are using named parameters. And then we are using JDBC client dot SQL and we are going to pass whatever the SQL we would like to run. And we can call dot param and then specify these named uh, parameter values. So for email, I'm going to pass the email. And here is one interesting thing. If the column names are same as the bean names, uh, in our case, uh, user uh, bean names, we can simply call dot query and specify the class name. It is going to automatically populate these column values into the properties into user class automatically. If they are same or even if there is underscore separation, it's going to automatically convert it into a, a bean property of created capital A T created it. So underscore uh, column names are going to be uh, converted into a camel case and then try to populate into this pin. Or if that is not the uh, desired behavior, you can also create a uh, user row mapper. So here we have a user row mapper which implements row mapper and what is the written uh, type user. So then we need to implement this method and we we have a result set uh, uh, here so we are going to extract the data from result set and then populate all the data into our user bean and return from it so we can pass a row mapper implementation as well okay and finally here we are saying it is going to be an optional because when somebody pass a email there can be or may not be a row exist for the given email so it is going to be uh, zero or one so we are uh, using this optional to return an optional of user type so for exist by email again it's going to be same thing like here we are saying is there any count more than zero for the given email and then we are specifying the parameter and return type is i am simply specifying boolean so there is only one uh, value return type so i am simply returning it can be either true or false right so it is now here i am using single because i just return a single value which is a boolean so i am returning this and then again we have find by id uh, this is very similar to find by email so no discussion and finally we have save method again we have uh, insert into uh, so on so columns and then we are uh, using this named parameters here 
And finally, PostgreSQL allow you to use this return class where you can specify what is the generated value you want to return. Here, I would like to return the auto incremented uh, property of ID, uh, column value of ID. So, in order to retrieve those auto generated columns, I can use this key holder. Uh, generated key holder and again I am using JDBC client specifying the SQL I want to run and then uh, pass the uh, parameters and finally while calling this update I am passing this key holder so once this is executed I can get the auto generated primary key value of ID like this key holder dot get key as so I know this ID can be converted into long so I am getting it as a long value I'm just logging it here, but if you want to return that, you can return that. So as you can see, um, using this Fluent API, it looks much nicer. If you have already used JDBC template, uh, you might know that was not so nice. It, it, it can get things done, but this looks much nicer. So here is how we can use JDBC client and then interact with the database. But uh, the point of using both uh, repository like here we have our repositories I implemented all the user repository operations using JDBC client and short URLs using Spring Data JPA just to demonstrate here is how you can use both Spring Data JPA and JDBC client as well okay now let's test it once I'm going to start I'm going to okay log in or okay so here I'm going to log in with admin so login is working fine which means uh, I'm able to use some of the user login methods now I'm going to register as a new user so I will use john at gmail.com Okay, I'm able to register successfully. Let me log in with John credentials. So I'm able to log in with John. So behind the scenes, all this registration and everything is using our newly implemented user repository with JDBC client. So they are all working fine. So uh, cool. So finally, we have implemented all the features that we have planned in uh, for URL shortener application. So in the next section, we are going to clean up our application code a little bit. And then finally, we are going to dockerize our uh, URL shortener application and run both our application and PostgreSQL in Docker uh, using Docker Compose. So stay tuned and thanks for watching. Bye bye.